Ah, the sound of crowbar being hit with a framing hammer. So carefully removing the stop beads and I reckon they're going to reuse those. But they're not going to reuse this. Lovely hundred year old timber. Set the saw slightly deep but that's fine, didn't hit anything. And an acro in place just to stop the whole lot falling down on his head. And then that old sand and lime plaster, that comes off really easily, doesn't it? I mean, it'll almost fall off if you shouted it. You see all the horse hair in it? How many horses did they have to take to the barber shop to get that horse hair? I mean, if you imagine it, all those buildings built all over London and all the big cities in England, all with sand and lime with horse hair in it. That's a lot of horses. But I suppose when they didn't have cars, that's, they did have a lot of horses. That's how they made the glue. So chopping out, ready to put the new lintel in. This is the point where that acro is doing absolutely nothing. And that's the point where they sometimes fall over and hit you on the head. So they're sticking a concrete plank lintel in here all the way across to widen the opening. So just getting rid of all the snots, all the old bits of sand and lime plaster. Even a small bit of snot can stop it going in properly. So now they've got that in, they're going to do a very quick switcheroo, which is take that out and before anything happens, get that acro in. That's it, that's enough, come on. So that's not going to fall down. So this is the rest of the wall that they're taking away to the new opening size. Really speaking, if you're going to do a job like this, you have to use an angle grinder at some point or another, because if you start trying to move it with a hammer and chisel, you just finish up with a ragged mess. Those old bricks, they're real seconds, basically. Anything they used indoors. Oh dear, here we go, a bit of dust here. So he's got a dust mask. What about the cameraman? Last bit, it's always the hardest bit. And just a little socket in the way. See at the bottom there, they've got blooming sand and cement, haven't they? So this is to take out a little bit of brickwork so they can put a bearing of padstone under each end of that lintel. Bit of concrete or an engineering brick. Anything that's got slightly better crush strength than those bricks, which have got hardly any crush strength at all. So here we are, we've got a bit of off cut of lintel in there. Uh, six inch bearing on either side. And just wind in a bit of real dry pack sand and cement. And then crack it up again with the acro just to get a bit of compression on it. Yeah, nicely compressed up, one on each end. That'll be plenty for that job. You don't want to bend those lintels too much, basically. They will bend. So pugging up that last bit, all ready for a bit of plaster. So that's pugged up, and tomorrow they can take those acros away. It'd be perfectly okay. As soon as that sand and cement's gone off actually a few hours it would be gone off enough to take them away but we normally leave it till next day so now he's got that supported underneath by the timber it's not going to go anywhere i love these screws straight in drill straight into the brickwork no need for any raw plugs or anything like that Oh, not for his hand. So a little noggin in the middle just to pick up the plasterboard. Yep, 
this game is all about accurate measuring, accurate marking, because once you've done that, there's no reason why it shouldn't fit. Question of which side of the line you go. So here's the new door liner. Now a purist would probably house those in and that saves having a little crack line along the top. But I know Robin Clevett butt jointed his actually so there's probably no need to house them in. Now the thing about this is you've got to put the spirit level on it make sure they're plumb. And you might need to wind that out slightly yeah. to do that. It looks like he's done that bit anyway. A little bit of plasterboard going on. Plasterboard screws just sunk slightly below, not too deep. Go too deep, you tear through the paper face. Nice job. Score and snap. This is all bread and butter work for builders, basically. Oh, tight. Little rasp, little surf form on there, just get a bit off. Bit more, no, it's in. In like kinky swimwear. Okay, a bit of plasterboard on the head. And that's just about flush with the other one, but he's gonna put some plaster on there, so even if it was a little lip, it wouldn't matter. Ah, the old bonding. Now the bonding coat is really for concrete and engineering bricks and things like that, but you can also use bonding on plasterboard just to bring out the levels on plasterboard. Things we would have done with lard and plaster a hundred years ago, you can now do with plasterboard and a little bit of bonding. So no need to wet the board or anything like that. You just go straight onto it, no need for PVA, that bonding will stick to the proverbial on a blanket. Now there will be those of you who are looking at this and thinking, oh what, there's no scrim on those joints, but actually the best way to put the scrim is to bed the scrim into the bonding coat once you put the bonding on, because if you put the scrim underneath the bonding, it's not going to stop the bonding cracking over those joints. So bond first, then scrim, and then finish off with your bald finish or, well, it would be multi finish in this case. Fill in the chases, got a light switch, push it in everywhere, lovely stuff. We're just taking it back flush with the wall. Marshalltown, trowel, carbon still. And there we go. I think he's got the finish on there. Sometimes it's hard to tell when that bonding coat goes on and you trowel it up. Right, so he's putting a bit of insulation in here. Now that really, that stuff is no good for soundproofing. It doesn't really do an awful lot, but I think if you've got it lying around, you probably just use it. But um, really you want a bit of rock wall in there for the sound and for the fire. Now if you skim that bonding the same day, then you don't really need to worry about stopping the suction. But if you leave it for a day and you go back over it, you're better off putting a bit of Unibond or SBR on it just to kill some of the suction. Otherwise you get a little bit of cracking, fire cracking sometimes on the finish coat. So here's the bonding going back on. He's dubbing it out basically. He's bringing the level out so that it'll finish up with a, a level wall there, flush. Thing to do with this bonding coat is to put it in there. Don't mess around, just put it in there and then rub it back out slightly. So here we are. That's the job finished. That was a bit abrupt, wasn't it? We leapt from one bit to another, but good job anyway. <laughs>